Hello and welcome back to the lair. We had Immortal Gates of Pyre playtest and I did play it quite a lot. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, let's see what Immortal Gates of Pyre brings to the RTS table. Let's jump right in. Real quick, if you're subscribed, thank you for that. If you're not, please hit the button so you don't miss on any awesome games. Next goal is 500 subscribers. So what is Immortal Gates of Pyre? It's an RTS game. On the surface, it looks very similar to something like StarCraft or StarCraft 2, but it's much, much more than that. Uh, we had the playtest just this weekend, and I can say it was amazing. For an alpha test, this is really, really, really impressive. Even now, the game plays better than Stormgate, which is... <laughs> A big big disappointment I will cover that uh, in the other video because um, Stormgate right now doesn't deserve to be in the same sentence that Immortal Gates of Pyre because this was just amazing I enjoyed so much uh, so right now uh, we had two factions to play with and each had two immortals now what are immortals those are something like overlords and they have different powers. Mostly they are not on the battlefield except for one. One does join uh, with a certain power and you have to get the power with the pyre. I will get to pyre uh, in a moment. First let's see other uh, resources that we have to gather. These are alloy and ether. Now how do we gather those? Well with good old base building of course. You have to build your base and then the workers will gather uh, alloy and the ether will gather itself if you put a structure on. Of course, those are both finite resources, so you'll have to expand as you go. Uh, now expansion, of course, you'll have to decide if it's the right time or not, because sometimes it can be the wrong decision. For example, if you expand too fast, maybe you will not have the army built up and you will suffer because of that. But I have to say, both of the factions are currently quite well balanced, even though I don't think that the Aru faction, so the little uh, flower zerg-like one, I don't think they had all of the units yet, because the Kurath, which I'm playing here right now with the big uh, capital ship there, and <laughs> they're attacking the Ancient now, I think they do have all of them and uh, the Aru didn't have a ultimate unit so to speak because the throne, the little, the big flying thing right there, that is a capital unit. It says it's an ultimate unit and probably the best one, the strongest one at least in uh, the game for the faction and the other faction doesn't have that yet. But even without that, it stood quite well against uh, the power of the Kurath. As you can see, I actually won here. Yay! <laughs> uh, I tried to win some games. Uh, but yeah, the balance is great right now. And I will say, maybe on the surface it kind of seems that uh, this is just like StarCraft with Protoss and Zergs. It's not. I can assure you it's not. Even within the faction, where you got to play with uh, two overlords, you had to choose yours, there are big differences on how you play that factions. Yeah, the Kurat may have uh, stronger units overall, but the population cap, of course, is bigger for those, so your army is smaller. And within those uh, the, uh, overlords or immortals, if you choose one, you will get different vanguard units. And even that makes a whole lot of a difference in your approach. And with that, also their powers are different. For example, in Kurath, I played with the dude. I forgot his name. Uh, he had a bit more offensive powers with a big AoE damage power. If you had enough pyre to cast it. And the lady, she had more defensive oriented powers. For example... If you're in a pinch, you could cast the power and she would bring your units to your nearest uh, Acropolis, your nearest base, so you could escape that way. So even that is much, much different. Uh, you have to strategize uh, much differently than with the, over, over, the other Overlord, and that's awesome. 
and I found it very very deep even with these two factions we are missing one still uh, the dev did confirm that at least one more faction is coming they said it's quite hard to make them which I believe that is true uh, because the balance right now how they did that in alpha test I don't know but it seemed that uh, any player can win just based on the skill so that is awesome now pyre what is pyre pyre is a resource which is used to cast your powers and the way you gain them is you have to go around the map find neutral mobs kill them and take over the point that they hold and that's the way you will get pyre now the passive income is quite low but there's an ancient and whichever team does most damage to the ancient gets a lot of pyre and you get a lot of pyre you get enough to cast your ultimate spell so this is actually really really important so you can't just sit in the base and do nothing. Well, you can, but you will miss out on Pyre powers and the other Overlord will not. And that will kind of bite you in the end, right? Because those powers are really strong if used correctly. Now, um, there is one thing. There is Build Assist in the game. Now, Build Assist, I didn't use it because I like to build my own base. I like to go my own build order. But it does help a lot. For example, if you're a very, very new player, you can turn on the build assist and there's different modes. For example, there's early game rush mode, there's fortification mode, and the AI will actually help you build your base as soon as your resources are at a certain level. I believe that was at least 1000 alloy. And they would build and produce units for you. So if you are new in the genre, that is a very, very good way to start um, the game, to start to see how to build. Of course, in the end, I would recommend to play with the build assistance off because you will have much more control over what you're building. Because sometimes you want to go your own way and then <laughs> the AI will build certain units you maybe don't want and maybe you will forget to um, click the other mode and you will still be in early rush stage when the mid game is in and that's just not good because you will lose to more advanced units. This was the best alpha that I ever played. I, I can't stress that enough. The devs, Sunspear, they deserve all of the praise for this. It, they seem prepared. They seem to know exactly what they're doing, where they want this game to go, and the uniqueness of the game is there. This is not a clone of StarCraft, it is not a clone of Warcraft or Command and Conquer or anything like that. This is its own unique game. I know it came from a StarCraft 2 mod, I think, but th the way they came to now is just amazing and I can't wait to see more of this game. I wish we could play more but of course servers cost money and I would recommend anyone who can to support these developers because they deserve everything good that they can get at this point. This was so enjoyable I can't find the words to describe it and I'm stressing this a lot but it just was and this game is now on the top of the list of my most uh, expected RTS games this year I hope maybe next year but it is on the first place I think it was Tempest Rising before that but mm, this is just better I, Tempest Rising is good but this is just better <laughs> and I hope you get some more uh, gameplay, uh, there will be AI of course too, but I, I, I wish all of the best to the developers. And when this game comes out, when 
I can play it again, I will. There will be more videos about this game, of course. I will uh, introduce all of the factions and all of the immortals that we know about right now. So don't miss out on that. And keep an eye on this game. Because it is just that good. And if you didn't play it, wow. If you missed out on it, I, f I, I feel kind of sorry <laughs> that you missed out on this. Because that was a prime... RTS experience. Okay, so this was Immortal Gates of Pyre. If you enjoyed the video, please join the Goblin Tribe. Subscribe, comment down below if you played the game and what you thought about it. And if you have any other game that you would like to see on the channel, of course, you can let me know. I'll try to look into it. Until next time, Goblin out. Bye.